You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present Double Act by Trisha Brachen with Juliet Vaughan Turner. Holly Galanders and Ian Sterling. There is something on tonight. I'm not too late. Every night, Mum. Do you have a booking? I should not like you to think I'm a down and out, a waif and stray, Mrs. Shepherd. Good evening, Mrs. Shepherd. Is your husband. I have carried this bag all the way from the station. We should have been happy to arrange a taxi cab. All part of the adventure. May I take your bag, Mum? A woman should not have to act as a porter. I have carried it this far. Very well. This way, Mum. And now, you present him. Oh, a big, soft bed, thank goodness. Breakfast is served in the Etruscan room from... Do I not look suitable for dancing? I should have driven, but the night air was a touch too fresh. You see, I'm not quite the modern woman. I can see that from the way you're lying on the bed. May I bring you some cocoa, Mum? There are so very many accidents these days. An elderly lady of my acquaintance fairly drove into a lake. She took a bend, not travelling above 20 miles an hour and found herself knee-deep in water. Had she not been such a strong swimmer, she should have drowned and joined there a young girl from the Middle Ages, of whom it is said that she avoided the lascivious gaze of the local squire by jumping in. Some folks say that ladies should not be out driving alone. A woman with a man in the passenger seat shall no more resist her terrible fate than a medieval squire may change his wicked nature. Very good. Perhaps a small cocoa. Plenty of sugar, please. Are there very many persons staying here? Been half empty since Halloween. Most folk come to take the waters. It is perhaps the only way they may steal themselves against a family Christmas. <laughs> I'll get you that cocoa, Mum. They will still be at the golf club. Dining on some poor pigeon brained by one of their vicious little balls. He, looking at her, as if those tight brown curls are incapable of falling grey, as if the whole of life should be one long round unto the nineteenth hole, and in the morning they shall start afresh at the first, she in her plus fours and miraculous waist around which is belted his arm. Come in! It's open! You left your purse at reception, Mum. I did. Must have dropped it on the floor, Mum. Oh, these new fangled bags with the zips. You can check it, if you sit up. Oh, one must. I should hardly think you have unburdened me. If I might thank you for your diligence. Oh, we're not permitted to accept gratuities. Then there is no reward for goodness. I'm praying for heaven, Mum. Ah, so you believe? I do as I'm told. I had faith once. You are required in the ballroom, I suppose, to dance with the elderly gentleman. <laughs> Last time I did the foxtrot, I tripped over me tail. I rather enjoy the Charleston. Really? I mean, to say... I do not seem a likely candidate for such transatlantic high spirits, but I find myself rather captivated. All them knees and elbows. My father was American. They favour knees and elbows. You don't look American. If I might be permitted. That is a shame. They are entirely vigorous. I'd better be going, Mum. I finish at ten. Then you might take tea with me. Or cocoa. Cocoa? It should not be wholly unheard of for guests to share their good fortune. Unless you have family. Uh, of course you will have family. Forgive me. I've got mother. Oh, then you are fortunate. She's away at Whitby. In December. She takes care of Uncle. Otherwise he goes wandering over the cliffs, blethering on about Dracula and all that. 
phantasmagorical lark, then you are literary folk. My handwriting's passable, but my grammar's atrocious. I did not learn to read until I was eight. I lived rather in a fairy kingdom of my own fashioning. If it is a vampire, tell him I was expecting a guest. Some folk come here for their assignations. A woman in want of a vigorous gentleman should hardly venture upon a Yorkshire spa town. I'm expecting my agent. He arrives soon and should be wanting cake. He is very elderly and very greedy. That is why I took him for my agent. I'm a writer, you see, of some small note in the lending libraries of the home counties. Is there a local treat you might recommend? Try the cake. Don't just pick. Do you need a hand? No, thank you. I'm perfectly capable of stirring my own cocoa. But I should like another cup as soon as humanly possible. He's very elderly, but surprisingly punctual. Righto. Please, leave it on the trolley. I shall fetch it in a moment. Has he gone, Mum? If he is eavesdropping... I shall discover him now. Oh, how disappointing he's gone. How many sugars, dear? Mum, I couldn't possibly. I cannot take cocoa with a lady who mistakes me for an item of furniture. Sorry? Mum, it sounds so final, like a dead weight. Please sit with me, or I shall think I am become a bedside cabinet. Shall I be Dracula? Oh, please. I wonder where I've got to. I normally say goodnight to Fred and Ginger. She's a singer. Singer? Won't be stopping long in hospitality, so Mother says. You are all in the business of entertainment, I suppose. Well, Fred's got his banjo, but I'm not up to much. You must never say that. I'm sorry, Mum. Don't be sorry. Just never say that again. You're capable of so much. There are worlds. Well, there are worlds in which we are quite otherwise. Yes, I'm sure, Mum. Mrs Shepherd. When do you suppose this cake's coming? You simply can't get the staff. Red and Ginger are good folk. We look out for each other. That is good to know. What a wonderful thing. Fred'll be mithering to walk her home. Are they? I mean to say... Fred's right soft on her. How can you be sure? Keep showing her his saxophone. He saved up to buy it, but he doesn't know how to play it. I suspect that applies to many things in life. She's got a voice like a tinkling bell. Just right for love songs. See poor old Fred standing there next to her, forgetting to strum his banjo. <laughs> it must be marvellous to be able to sing, to open one's mouth and have beauty pour forth. You're a writer. All them words tumbling out one after the other. If only. Seems one must find life excruciating in order to produce anything of worth. Is that why you're here? To suffer. Taking the waters before your husband arrives. I fancy he should have preferred the Turkish baths. They're hot and punishing, I hear. Oh, thank you. I'll just leave it on the side. Don't you want your supper? That cake looks like coal. It's called Parkin, made with black treacle. Oh, I'm sure it's lovely. Are you all right? Never better. Shall I fetch the doctor? Would you like to see a photograph of my late husband? Is he dead? No, nope, just late. Oh, dashed zip. That's why I leave it open. Very handsome. Staring into the distance like that. He was often otherwise occupied. Makes him look distinguished. Like an oil painting. It was the war that did for him. I mean to say, he returned right enough in his body. There was a song he used to sing. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, a hole. Never heard of it. No, I think it was German, originally. Flaming Bosch. Pardoning my French. Then mended, dear Henry, dear Henry, dear Henry. Then mended, dear Henry, dear Henry, mend it. Another one of his favourites, was it? Some songs should have stayed in the trenches. Send him back to Berlin. Oh, he was always so gay, so carefree. You want a fellow who's not mithering you all the time. Where's my tea? Where's my socks? Then, 
much as rain descends into a deep, dark cave and the floor finally falls away, his mind was eroded, erased of all feeling from our former life. Shell shock's a terrible thing. Are you soft on anyone? Me? Oh, I haven't got time. What with mother and uncle? We must meet plenty of lively people working here. It's mostly elderly folk begging your pudding. Ah, the cure. And all the baths. Turkish, medicated, electric and needle. Medicated? Electric, needle? You'll have to ask the doctor. Oh, there really is a physician to hand. On call 24 hours a day, in case someone comes over queer. You get a lot of that at their age. But there is still some merriment to be had. Bread and ginger put on quite a show. <laughs> I should like to see it. Tonight? I promise not to sing. Though I cannot guarantee I shan't dance. You're very good. Very nimble. Then shall we see what Fred's up to with his saxophone? Oh, Mother gets terrible headaches if I'm not home on time. Is she not in Whitby? She has visions. Reckons she knows when I'm not tucked up safe in my bed. Then let us see you are not tucked up safe in your bed. Oh, please don't laugh at her prognostications. I can assure you that I take otherworldly powers as matters of the utmost kind. How else should I be a writer? That I inhabit strange domains and have visions of my own? She starts ringing the police. Uncle has a telephone and she makes sure to use it. It's the only way I can get her to stop in Whitby. Would you like to take the cake? Perhaps save it for her. Good job it keeps like coal. I've had a lovely evening. Thank you, Mum. Just testing to see you've still got your faculties. We all need the cure sometimes. That we do. Do you think I might venture to the ballroom as I am? I am impossibly glamorous, am I not? I didn't like to say. A good job I shall be travelling to Leeds tomorrow to purchase something suitable. It's got some lovely shops as Leeds. Oh, would you like to come with me? I'm going first thing. You could be my early morning wake-up call. I'm on for breakfast, then making beds all morning. You could not discover a sudden ailment? There are so many elderly folk hereabouts with debilitating conditions. Some of them contagious. I wouldn't get paid. I can remedy any deficit. I think I know what you're saying, but thanking you kindly, I couldn't. Then perhaps at the weekend, or on your day off. You intending to bide a while? I do not know what I intend any more. I exist from day to day, from dance to dance. Then you might accompany me. I could hire a cab so we should not be recognised on the bus. Mother will know. Indeed she might. Good night, Mum. Good night, Nan. <gasps> oh, I heard them call your name. I suppose it is short for Nancy. I doubt I shall become a grandmother. <laughs> it is a kind, friendly name. Request a tune for me. Something slow for silly feet. So you have divined that I might just go to bed? It's a gift, Mum. The crossword. A strange, fashionable romance. Murder, I suppose. Five words. Three, four and five across. Six and seven down. He will be driving home soon, hoping not to wake the dog as he creeps into the hallway. Hoping that the dog, whom he has always called the dog, not by his own true name, will be too sleepy to savage him for an intruder. Or else he will be with her. In a home free of all furry creatures and nighttime nuisances. In which case he will not miss me at all. I could return on the early morning train and be there before lunchtime, feeding cucumber sandwiches to the dog. Seeing that look spread across his face. My husband, that is, not the dog. That look that speaks a library for my superior opinion of the canine. I should have brought you, but nowhere takes pets. You are deemed smelly and noisy, while so much of humanity is rank and disordered.